Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. Epic disaster flick or tragic love triangle? Take your pick because this one's got them both. And it's by the crown jewel of Poverty Row Studios, Tiffany Pictures. So it's gonna be a gem. Dear. Fix this dress tie for me, please, will you? If I were a commander in the Navy, I'd be ashamed to admit I couldn't fix the dress tie. Says my beautiful wife. Now, dear, if you're going to start that, we'll never get to the banquet. Why do we have to go to these dinners anyway? penalty you pay for being important. There. Thanks. Just the same, there are times when this hero business is the bunk. For my last night, too. Why don't they stage these fool banquets a week ahead? Because it wouldn't read so well in the newspapers. Commander Hall was honored at a banquet a week before his departure for the South Pole. It sounds flat. Oh, I don't know. Commander Hall spent his last evening at home quietly with his wife. Sounds rather nice to me. Oh. oh. Yes, I, uh, uh, I asked him to come over and go with us. Oh. Tell him we'll be right down. Yes, sir. You don't mind. Mind, Tom? Why, no, of course not. You know, I wouldn't be half as keen on this trip if it were not for Tom. He's as excited about it as a schoolboy. All he talks about. It. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Commander. Good evening, Miriam. Good evening, Tom. You look perfectly beautiful tonight. I don't know whether I like that or not. You put too much emphasis on that tonight. To me, you're always beautiful. <laughs> Leave it to Tom to always say the right thing at the right time. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aren't you 
thrilled at the thought of actually starting tomorrow. I'll say I am. Let's take her along. Well, as a mascot? No. <laughs> as guardian angel. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, there you go again. I told you it was a gift. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to propose the final toast of the evening. A toast of Godspeed to the officers and crew of the expedition through the person of its gallant leader, Commander Donald Hall. Uh, Commander Donald Hall. Commander Donald Hall. Commander Donald Hall. Commander Donald Hall. <laughs> Thank you. And now, if I may, I'd like to propose a toast. To the real heroes of this expedition, the courageous wives and sweethearts who remain at home. To the wives and sweethearts. feel when you face an expedition? Is it something of the gambler's faith in the turn of a wheel? Well, frankly, when I think of Peary and Amundsen and Andre, and compare their attempts with this expedition, I feel rather humble. Humble? Absolutely. Consider what Peary faced. The odds against him were overwhelming. That's true. When you consider the modern inventions that we have at our disposal, this expedition seems like child's play. Child's play? Well, I should hardly call it that. No. Well, by way of comparison. Once those men started, they lost touch with the outside world. We have the wireless and base camps equipped with aeroplanes. Commander, if you could make a survey of the morals of the natives at the South Pole. <laughs> I'm afraid there are none, Doctor. Uh, what, uh, morals or natives? Good <laughs> view, <laughs> <you>, Sir John. <laughs> Tell me, is it true that your men are sewn up in their furs and don't take them off until the end of the trip? Pretty nearly true, Sir John. My word. Yeah. How do they take a bath? <laughs> <laughs> That's an English one for you. Tom, tell me the truth. Since the plans were first made a year ago, Donald has insisted that there's not a bit of danger involved. Is that true? Why... Why, yes. Yes, of course. But there is danger, isn't there? A great deal of danger. <laughs> You're not going to get frightened the last moment. I don't know. See, those women seem to be sympathizing with me. It made me realize that they were frightened. And that frightened me. <laughs> now, I, I wonder if I may be excused. You see, I haven't much more time with uh, 
My wife. Why, Miriam, you're trembling. I am frightened. Frightened? I have a sort of feeling that... Miriam. Oh, my dear. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It wasn't your fault, dear. I couldn't help it. I forgot myself. It, it was my fault. I don't know how I could have been so clumsy. Oh, I'm delighted it happened, Commander. How I could possibly... Everyone will be wanting a piece of that vase as a souvenir. What? I'll be quite the most popular woman in Washington. Well, that's very charitable of you, but still I... And now I'm going to insist that you autograph every fragment before you leave tonight. Oh. Well, very well, then. If, if someone will lend me a pen, I'll get to work. It would at least take my mind off you. Has anyone a pen? I have one. Thank you. Thank you. Commander? Thank you. Oh, Commander. Autograph. Don't forget me. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, they're joining that new menu here, too. Good night, Mr. Glass. Commander. Thank you. Sit beside Miriam. What a come down. What did you say? Awkward of me, wasn't it? Breaking that vase. Well, I wouldn't let that bother me. No, but it does. One awkward gesture, and then smash. Well, your future isn't ruined through smashing Mrs. Talent's vase, I'm sure. I'm not so sure. Oh, don't be silly, Donald. What a position to find myself in. There I was, the guest of honor, lionized like a little tin hero, taking it rather gracefully, too. And then, smash, and the bars scattered in bits all around me. It was just one of those things that couldn't be helped, Donald. Nevertheless, one can't go to someone else's home and break a thing of value and not make restitution. Is that right, Tom? Right, Donald. Well, here we are. Oh. Good night. Oh, not yet, Tom. Come on in. 
It's late. Oh, have a nightcap. I think I'd better be getting on. <laughs> Tom, it's our last night. Come on in. Miriam, you insist. Yes, come along, Tom. Tom, how will you have it? Tall glass or neat? Neat, please. I know what Miriam wants. I hope not. Everything he said had a double meaning. You imagine that. I tell you, he's playing with us. Oh, Miriam. He knows, I tell you. Here's to the three of us. What's the matter, dear? It's my head. Oh, I'm sorry. Too much excitement. I'm afraid so. Let me get you an aspirin. Oh, will you? It's in the, I think, the second shelf in the medicine case. I'll hurry. Now, oh, Miriam, we're not sure. Oh, he knows, I tell you, he knows. Then there's only one decent thing for me to do. Tom, what do you mean? Oh, you won't do that. Promise me you won't. I'm sorry, Miriam. Is your aspirin, dear? Donald. Why do you go on pretending? Pretending? Oh, why don't you come out with it? You saw us in the conservatory, didn't you? Yes. I knew it. I knew it. Now, Mary. Donald. You must know the respect I have for you would never let me be guilty of doing a cheap thing. What happened tonight had to happen. Tom and I were helpless. Oh, won't you believe that? We, we were swept away. It's all my fault, Donald. I was a cad. My dear chap, I have known you all your life. And I've never known you to do a dishonorable thing. I'm sure it must have been something pretty big to make you forget yourself this time. And now I think we'd better forget it. This is the last evening that Miriam and I will have together for a long time. Good night. Good night, Miriam.
Shall we go upstairs, dear? But there's still something you don't understand. My dear, I think I understand everything. Oh, no, Donald, you don't. I told you this was no mere flirtation. Do you think what you saw tonight could have happened if it were only that? Do you think I could have let Tom take me in his arms and kiss me? Of course, my dear, the, the emotion of saying goodbye got the better of you. No, Donald, it wasn't that. It was because I loved him and he loved me. Miriam! No. Now you understand. Well, what do you want me to do? I want my freedom, Donald. Your freedom? You mean a, di a divorce? Oh, my dear, I I'd rather die than hurt you this a way. Divorce? You mean that, that you and I... I do what I told you what's left for us. God, what's left? What's left of five years of hopes and plans and efforts, all rooted in my love for you? What's left of anything now? Oh, don't, don't, please, don't. I can hear that bars crashing about me again. Only this time, it's the world that's falling about me in pieces. Do you think that the ice will affect it? Oh, I think not. Uh, let me show you. Good. Goodbye, Miriam. All oh, luck to you, Tom. Thanks. Time to take off, Miriam. I want you to be happy. Everything will be all right, I'm sure. Oh, Donald. I called up my attorney this morning. Anything you want done, they'll do. 
I've got to take you in my arms, dear. The whole world's looking on. Goodbye. Explorer, George. I've established communication with the Explorer, sir. Very well. Hey, we have interrupted Professor Jones' concert in order to give you an announcement eagerly awaited by millions. Dispatch from the dirigible explorer, now en route to the South Pole, carrying a band of intrepid men under the leadership of Commander Donald Hall. Dauntlessly roaring through uncharted skies toward the land of eternal ice and snow, the giant silver dirigible sends back word that all is well. The dispatch reads as follows. On board the Explorer, Thursday, August the 4th, 4.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Confirming position recently reported, we have just passed over the Cocos Keys in the Southern Caribbean Sea. Visibility splendid, motors functioning perfectly. Optimistic of complete success in expedition. Signed, Hall, Commander. Professor Jones' orchestra will now continue. All right, there, Professor. didn't I tell you? They're going along splendidly. Yes. But why are they flying over the Caribbean Sea if they're going to the Pole? They have to fly south to get to the South Pole. South Pole? 
I thought they were going to the North Pole. But then, I never did have any sense of direction. Him, George. Must be heavy weather on that balloon. Sounds like the 4th of July. a message from the commander. We heard it over the kitchen radio. Thank you, Sam. Yes, ma'am. Broadcasting the message sent by wireless from the control room of the dirigible explorer. The dispatch reads, on board the explorer Thursday, August the 4th, 11.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Cannot confirm position last reported. Have been fighting terrific tropical storms since 5 p.m. Visibility very bad. Motors running full speed to offset heavy headwinds. Have not seen land for two hours. Signed, Hall Commander. Boys, hold everything, please. Station W-I-T-I. Stand by, everyone. Here's a news item just flashed by the Navy Department from the Dirigible Explorer. Passed through terrific storms. Two motors disabled. Right fin damaged. Proceeding slowly south. Signed, Hall. Command.
Got Gleason. Huh? Got Gleason, the explorer. Oh, he's early today. Must be way down the end of South America. Wish I was aboard. Yes, you and my mother-in-law. <laughs> the base camp. Remarkable. In 15 hours, they'll be over the pole. Wonderful. Storm, bearings, unable, and blind. Unable to use sexton, it looks like, sir. Give a message from the explorer. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, it's just coming in over the radio, Captain Russell. Thank you. Incomplete because two way communication was not established. The message is have been flying through blinding snowstorms for 11 hours, apparently still over ice pack, unable to use sextant or take observation. 
Ship losing altitude due to weight of snow and ice. storm to abate, but in the meantime can do nothing but maintain full speed. We'll keep radio operator sending steadily, hoping you get all or part until situation alters here. Signed, Hall Commander. For I'm just a bubble of trouble and care. Very fond of petting, but I'm getting nowhere. Damn! Reaching for Bring someone some coffee to the living room. Fine. They're falling! Falling. Weight of ice on envelope too great. Despite full speed ahead, ship losing altitude rapidly. Only 300 feet above ice pack. Can see ice peaks plainly. Falling. 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 Can't even get his carrier wave. Gleason's off the air entirely. A night of bliss, but when the dawn is breaking, oh memory, that's soon to be forgotten. Attention. Everybody, we've just heard from the Navy Department. A message has been received from the dirigible explorer. She is apparently... Wait a minute. I'll read the message. It's incomplete. Falling. Weight of ice on envelope too great. Despite full speed ahead, ship losing altitude rapidly. Only 300 feet above ice. Can see ice peaks plainly. Falling. 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 We're about to crash. Oh. Navy Department reports that the utmost measures will be taken immediately to ascertain the location of the lost Zeppelin. And Commander Hall's base camp will be ordered immediately to explore the Antarctic for the survivors, if any. We are warned, however, of the extreme difficulty because the explorer was not able to locate a position for the past 12 hours. We will now continue our station program. To have to hold, to live for just a moment, in ecstasy and then to be for a God.
Bob, drop your ladder. All right, sir. All right, men, stand by. Everybody. Aye, aye, sir. All ashore. I don't know where that ladder goes, dude. Take it easy. Take it easy. Gangway. Somebody hold that ladder on the bar. Stand back and listen to the as it comes down, boys. Careful. Watch out there. Now, don't step on that ice. Join the Navy and see the world. I've seen a lot, but never anything like this. Gee, look at that ice. Tons of ice on it. Unload the ship. Gotta get that weight out of it before she breaks her back. Yes, sir. I see. Stand right there. Put my down. Unload this. All right, pass this stuff along, boys. Leave these leaks. Yes, sir. Let's go. 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 She'll never rise from this ice, sir. Easy. 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 How about the radio? The radio went out of commission, sir. Long before we crashed. Have it repaired at once. Very good, sir. is on the telephone again, sir. Very well. Hello. Captain Russell? Yes. You haven't heard anything yet? Oh. Thank you. I'm trying not to worry. But if I don't hear from you, may I call again? Thank you. Goodbye. And the minute any word comes through from the Navy Department, we will broadcast it to our listeners in. Thank you. All right, boy. There. The repair job is finished, sir. Can we get the base camp now? Yes, sir. If our batteries are strong enough, we can get them just as soon as our tubes warm up. Got them, sir. Look out. There go your tubes. And those are our last ones, too. And no hope of repairs here. You can't repair vacuum tubes here, sir. There goes our last chance of help by radio. Any orders, sir? How much food have we? I've cut down on our rations. We have uh, enough for about eight days. We'll split up into separate groups. And go out over the ice. In different directions. I'm sure the base camp will send out searching planes. It will make it easier for them to find us. Very good, sir. 
Try and cover as much territory as possible, will you boys? We'll do our best, sir. Good luck to both of you. Bye-bye. So long, boys. So long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jim. Now then, Bozo, be a good dog and stay here till I come back. Bob will take care of me, won't you, Bob? Yes, sir. I told you, Bozo. Go on now. Take it. Goodbye. Come on, boys. Let's go. So what's the big idea? Now go on back, Jack. Go on back. Why didn't you stay back there with Bob like I told you to? I'll go on back. Go on. Beat it. Oh. Oh, very well, then if you must, come along.
Start circling when you are 200 miles due west. The rest of the squadron will cover the outer area. Good luck to you, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. What was that? What was what? I thought I heard the sound of a motor. Oh, it's just your imagination again. No, no, I tell you. Listen. It was just a miracle that I found you here. I was just about ready to turn and go back to camp. Where are the others? Gone. Gone? We're all that's left. Oh. Commander Hall. And I'm Tom Armstrong. Lieutenant Wallace, sir. <laughs> well, I guess the first thing that you're interested in is some food. Think of it, Donald. We're going home. People, streets, lights, music. As far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to go now. Yes. Pop, we're going home. I'm afraid, gentlemen, I've got some bad news for you. 
What do you mean? My plane will only carry one passenger. You mean that one of us must remain here? I'm afraid so. It's up to you which one I take. Long straw, Tom, goes back. Lieutenant, take him back. No, no, I tell you I won't. I'm still the head of this expedition, and I command you to go. But, Donald, you don't know what you're asking me to do. Asking you to do? <laughs> I'm not even thinking of you. I'm only thinking of Miriam. Her happiness is all that counts. She wants you, and you're going back. Don't worry, sir. I'll come back for you. I know you will, if it's humanly possible. There's food here to last for a week, sir. Thanks. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Wait a minute. He won't take up much room, will he? No.
Lieutenant Armstrong is now being officially welcomed by Admiral Townsend. Please stand by, and I'll ask the Lieutenant to say a few words over the microphone. Lieutenant Armstrong, can you please say a few words over the microphone? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the hero of the hour, Lieutenant Armstrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the real heroes of the expedition are back there. Fourteen brave men who died in the frozen south. The last and greatest hero is Lieutenant James Wallace, who single-handed came to my rescue and later returned for Commander Hall and perished in the attempt. So if there's any glory attached to this expedition, it really belongs to those men. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where well, Marcy Town, I sure is glad to see you, sir. I sure is. I'm glad to be back, too, Sam. Is Mrs. Hall in? Yes, sir. She sure is. Tom! Miriam. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I'm glad to be back, Miriam. Come. Sit down. Now tell me. Tell me just what happened. Everything from beginning to end. Please, Miriam. I can't go through all that again. Tom, you must. I've got to know. Well, we started off all right. And then we got into storms and snow. And the ship got overloaded with ice. Oh, yes, I know all that. I read it in the papers. I heard it over the radio until I almost went mad. What I want to know is, what happened when you and Donald were alone and that aviator found you? Please, Miriam, not that. But, Tom, I've got to know. The newspaper said that when Lieutenant Wallace found you, there were only two of you left, you and Donald. He told you he could take only one passenger back. Is that right, Tom? Yes, Miriam. But why, why all these questions? I want to know, Tom. I've got to know. What, Miriam? How it was decided that you were the one to come back. We, we were going to draw straws. And did you? Please, Miriam. Did you? No. Why? Why didn't you? Please, Miriam, don't ask me to tell you that. Was it because Donald wouldn't let you? Was that it? Yes. Why? Why did 
didn't he want to gamble on a chance to live? Why? Because... Because of me. Because he knew I loved you. That was it, wasn't it? He wanted me to be happy. He sent you back because I told him I loved you. I told him that myself. Oh, Donald, Donald! If I could only make you hear me! If I could only make you understand that it's you I love, that, that I'd never stop loving you! Oh, Donald, Donald! Miriam. Friends of Radio Lab. Stand by for the greatest news of the day. Where it has just been received that Lieutenant Wallace, who was reported lost, has returned to base camp number one, bringing with him the leader of the Antarctic expedition, Commander Hall. Commander Hall's condition is serious, but it is believed with a couple of weeks of careful nursing, it will set him on his feet. On this suspicious day, when Washington Donald. celebrated the return of Lieutenant Wallace, did you hear Armstrong, that? The whole Donald's alive! Was Alive! Give me Central 2401, please. Captain Russell. Captain Russell, this is Mrs. Hall. Could I send a message to Commander Hall? I want to tell him that... 